Imagine a world where your child looks up to you, but not just as a parent, mm -mm, but rather as a trailblazing entrepreneur. Yeah. A world where you're not just clocking hours for this faceless corporation, but rather you're building a legacy. Sounds dreamy, right? Yeah. Well, today I'm here to shatter some myths. I'm even going to ruffle a few feathers and I'm going to challenge you to take the reins of your destiny. Look, if you've ever felt that burning itch to break free and carve your own path, then this episode might just be the push that you need, that you're looking for, that you're hungry for. But be warned, I am not here to sugarcoat anything. I'm really here to ignite a fire. So you really ready? All right, let's dive in. Being an entrepreneur sounds like, yes, another new client. I did it. But it can also sound like, I am really not understanding this technology and I'm feeling so overwhelmed. Am I even cut out for this? That's why I started the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast to help infopreneurs, coaches, and course creators who want to build a business online but are battling technology, overwhelm, procrastination, and even imposter syndrome. Think successfully, think differently, think bigger, and take action by learning tips from an array of business owners, all dropping knowledge on the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, my dark horse friends and family, my driven entrepreneurial parents out there. Today, we're going to be diving into a topic that, that's near and dear to my heart and hopefully uh, many of yours as well. That's why you're here. It is the undeniable power and, my friends, the sheer necessity of entrepreneurship, especially entrepreneurship for you parents out there. Now, I get it. I know some of you might be thinking, holy crap, entrepreneurship, are you crazy? I got diapers. I got school runs. I got parent-teacher meetings. I, I got just the basic household stuff. All that stuff on my plate already. Yeah, well, absolutely. Here's the kicker. Today's episode, well, I don't want it to be a, just another pep talk. I want us to venture out, maybe way out, into some controversial waters. Now, many of you may feel like the corporate world, well, I know lots of you do because I've heard you tell me, the corporate world is this soul-sucking vampire. There's no other way to say it, right? And you're just offering up your neck, right, in your, your, your that main artery right there. That's right, right? Day in and day out. Well, my friends, brace yourselves. We're about to challenge some deep-seated beliefs. And trust me, by the end of this episode, you might just see the world through a whole set of new eyes. There won't be rose-colored lenses, but I certainly will try and give you a whole new perspective. So if you're a parent with dreams bigger than the 9 to 5 grind, stick around. Things are about to get a little bit interesting. So let's dive in. Picture this. Let's say you're on a Zoom call. Oh, Riverside, right? Zoom has its issues. Anyway, we, we, we won't bash anybody. You're on a video call discussing the quarterly projections. And in the background, your toddlers decide that now is the perfect time for a solo rendition of Baby Shark. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you, get, you feel me on this. Welcome to the world of the entrepreneur parent. It's a juggling act. It's a tightrope walk. It's a three-ring circus. Heck, it's a full-blown circus. But it's the most exhilarating, right? Now, let me give you a little story here. A friend of mine, let, let's call her Jane. I didn't get permission to share this, so I'm, the name just been changed to protect the innocent. Anyway, Jane was at a party when someone asked her what it was she did for a living. And with pride, right, her shoulders went up. She said, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm also a full-time mom. What response do you think she got? Yeah. Oh, so you sell crafts on Etsy? Now, look, I'm not trying to throw any shade on Etsy here. We got lots of Etsy heroes out there that are doing great things, but come on. Being a parent and an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you're just dabbling in business between diaper changes. Mm -mm. It means you could be out there running board meetings, maybe with a little bit of baby food on your blazer as you're closing deals during nap times. What's up with this misconception that parents, especially moms, 
can't be serious entrepreneurs. That they are just playing shop, right? They're just pretending. Well, I don't think it's true. I think here's the truth. We're building empires, y'all. We're setting examples. And yes, occasionally we may be doing it with a little bit of baby drool on our shoulders. So what? A little bit of glitter on our faces and, and chalk under our fingers. But you know what? That, my friends, is the beauty of it. You can do both. Have you ever read a book that you thought was really speaking right just right to your soul. It was like the author was sitting there across the table from you and writing especially to you. That's kind of how I felt when I picked up and read Michael Hyatt's Entrepreneurs Will Save the World. And if you haven't read it, let me give you the quick lowdown. Hyatt's masterpiece isn't just about business strategies or profit margins. It's really this clarion call to all entrepreneurs urging all of us, you included, to recognize your potential to reshape the very world we live in, one business at a time, one venture at a time, one customer at a time. The essence of the book? Well, entrepreneurs are really the modern day superheroes. Yeah, right? Can you feel it? Got the cape on, right? You stand there with your fists on your shoulders. We're not just here to make money. Mm -mm. We're here to make a damn difference. And this aligns so beautifully with what we're trying to do here at the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. We're not just talking about financial freedom. We're talking about creating a legacy. We're talking about making an impact. We're talking about transforming everything about your world, about your life, about your home. But here's the curveball from Hyatt's book that might ruffle a few feathers. The notion that entrepreneurs are born, not made. I have to challenge that because I believe that every single parent listening, every heck, even if you're not a parent, every single parent listening out there right now has that entrepreneurial fire within them, has that entrepreneurial opportunity residing somewhere in the deepest recesses of their soul. Hmm? It's not about being born with a silver spoon, no. Or a business degree. Uh -uh, no, no. It's about passion. It's about resilience. And it's about that underlying urge to create something meaningful. Something that fills a gap that's needed out there in the marketplace. With your friends, with your family, with your fellow entrepreneurs. So whether you were born an entrepreneur or you're going to make yourself into one, the world needs your unique touch. That's it. Right there. Okay? And maybe we're going to get a little edgy. But we're definitely, well, for some of you, I want to get a little uncomfortably real. So buckle up, put on your big boy, your big girl pants, and, and, and hear me out. Have you ever felt that gnawing emptiness at the end of a long work day? Yeah. That sinking feeling that despite the 8, 12, 16 hours you just put in, something's still missing. That, my friends, is the cost of trading your dreams for a paycheck. It's the price of letting a faceless corporation dictate the rhythm of your life. Hmm? Now, now, like I mentioned earlier, starting a business isn't just about financial freedom. It's this fierce declaration that you value yourself, that you value your dreams, you value your values, and you value your family more than the comfort of a predictable paycheck. It's about shielding what's sacred to you from the relentless demands of the corporate world. And let's be honest, a corporate world that sees you as just another replaceable cog in the machine. Hmm? Yeah. Now, let's paint that picture for a moment. Imagine a machine, vast, cold, probably, powered by the dreams and the aspirations of countless souls that work within the machine. Hmm? Every time you clock into that job, doesn't it feel a little bit like a life sentence? Like you're throwing in another piece of your spirit into the machine. You're feeding that machine with your very essence. Are you really okay with feeding that corporate behemoth that slowly and quite probably surely robbing you of that very essence? Maybe even sucking your soul like that vampire we talked about earlier? Hmm? Yeah, I get it. It's a little bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but here it is. If you're not building your dreams, you're building the dreams of someone else. And every day you stay in a job that does not resonate with your soul, you're not just losing time, my friends. 
You're literally losing a piece of yourself. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and quit your job and just jump off the cliff and grow wings on the way down. Some of you aren't built that way. I know my friend Zach Babcock. We've had him on the show a couple of times. He's built that way. Here's the other thing. I, I think entrepreneurship, some folks aren't ready for it yet. This message may be more about finding the job that doesn't suck away your soul, that you can give everything else. But here's the thing I want you to ask yourself. Is the safety of a regular paycheck worth the slow erosion of your very spirit? Hmm? Is it? Or is it time to break free? Is it time to embrace a little uncertainty and build something that truly reflects who you are, what you believe in, and what you stand for? Look, the choice is yours. But remember, life is too short to be a mere spectator in your own story. I mean, life is so short. I just turned 60, ladies and gentlemen, just a few days ago, as a matter of fact, a little over a week ago. And my best friend I had known since I was a teenager died over a decade ago. And he was two years my junior. Life, my friends, is too short. And here's another hard truth. And this one, for some of you, is going to sting a little bit. Every time you clock into that job that drains your soul, you are feeding that very corporate machine that's robbing you of your essence. I know I mentioned that earlier, but think about it. Again, are you willing to trade your dreams, your potential, and your happiness for a steady paycheck from a corporation that doesn't give a damn, that doesn't align with you and your values? Nah. Now, I think it's time to wake up and shake off those chains and claim your destiny because, my friends, you're worth so much more than that daily 9 to 5 grind. Okay? Now, to do this, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and do a little work. We've talked the talk. Now it's time to walk the walk. I'm about to challenge you to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and make yourself face some hard truths. But remember, growth never comes from comfort. Let me say that again. Your growth, personal, professional, physical, mental, spiritual, will never come from residing inside your comfort zone. Now, if you're ready to take the leap into your life and into your choices, let's get started. Okay? I'm going to give you some exercises here. So if you're driving right now, think about them, but keep your focus on the road and come back to this. Or what are we, a little about, about 14 minutes into the episode. Come back to this and really listen to them because I really want you to give these things some serious thought and some serious attention. Take some notes, right? Got a journal, right? You've heard me mention that a few times. All right, let's kick things off with a reality check, shall we? Every day, we vote with our wallets. <laughs> yeah, you're a consumer. Let's talk about a little conscious consumerism, shall we? Each purchase, each transaction is your nod of approval to the corporate practices, ethics, and values of those companies that you're buying from. So here's the question. How often do we stop and think about the real impact of those choices? Take a moment, really, seriously, right now, and reflect on your daily routine, the coffee you sip, the apps you use, the clothes you wear. Now, I want you to zero in on three, even two, heck, pick one, corporations that you support on a daily basis, on the regular, maybe it's weekly. Now, here's the catch. Choose the ones that deep down you have reservations about. Maybe it's a fast food chain with questionable sourcing practices. Or it's that clothing brand that has those dubious labor practices, right? You know, overseas there. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe it's that tech behemoth out there that seems to value profit way before your privacy. Whatever it may be for you. Maybe there's someone out there preaching or espousing some edict in their content, in their movies, in the series they publish, you're like, I just totally disagree with this. Okay. Do you have your three? All right. Now I want you to do, I want you to jot them down because we're going to dive a little deeper here. Now that you got those three down or however many you decided to write down, you could write down 10 for all I know. Do a little research, right? Don't go in there with just the assumption that you know everything. Over the next week, 
between now and the next time you hear my voice, in a new episode anyway, you can go back and listen to my voice a whole lot. (laughs) Over the next week, take some time to research those corporations. Truly understand their practices, understand their impact, and really understand their values. And not the values that they put up on a mission statement. The values they show you via their action. Because my friends, knowledge is power. And this will give you a far clearer picture of where your money is going. Now, let's talk about alternatives. For each of those corporations, let's identify at least two alternatives that far more align with your values. It could be a local business. It could be an ethical brand. It could be some sustainable option, whatever it is for you. The goal is to find replacements that make you feel good about the choices you're about to make, about the money and where you're spending it. Now, the action plan, and this is going to be the real challenge, ladies and gentlemen, over the next month, consciously reduce your reliance on the original corporations that you realize you are out of alignment with. Start small, right? Maybe swap one product or service at a time and track your progress. And notice a difference in how you feel when you support the businesses that resonate with you, your beliefs, and your values. Yeah. I want you to remember that every dollar you spend is a statement. It's a reflection of what you stand for. So let's make these statements count, shall we? Let's be conscious. Let's be intentional and proactive in shaping the world we want to live in. What does that got to do with being an entrepreneur? Well, as you're journeying out there on your entrepreneurial venture, there are going to be all kinds of services that you're going to engage in. Let's make sure we're using the ones that we believe in. All right. Now, let's take a journey. It's not just any journey. This is a journey into the future, into a world where you've fully embraced your entrepreneurial spirit. Now, this isn't about imagining success. This is about, my friends, feeling it. It's about living it, smelling it, tasting it, just, oh, wow, just embodying it, even if it's just for a few moments, okay? Let me set the scene here. I want you to, again, this is something you're going to have to do when you're not driving and listening to me. I want you to find a quiet space. Free of distractions. This could be your favorite armchair, a cozy corner of a room, a peaceful spot in the park, maybe where you do your podcasting, where I'm sitting right now. But I want you to sit down and close your eyes. Make sure you're safely tucked away somewhere so you're not endangering yourself or anyone else. But close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Feel the weight of the world and the day just kind of melt away for a moment. Okay? And I want to talk about morning rituals here. I want you to imagine waking up in your entrepreneurial life. What's the first thing you see? Could be the sun streaming through the curtains of your dream home. Could be the skyline from your penthouse apartment that you've always thought about. Or it could just be the perfect spouse laying next to you. Now, what's the first thing you do? Remember, this is your entrepreneurial life, not the one you're in right now. In that entrepreneurial life, what's the first thing you do? Are you enjoying a a quiet coffee? Reading messages from satisfied clients? Or maybe you're planning your day. Maybe you're a first moment exerciser. Maybe you meditate. What is it for you? I want you then to visualize your work day. Remember, you're the boss now. This is your life. This is your business. Are you checking up on your team? Are you getting together to brainstorm new ideas? Or perhaps you're hosting a workshop or a live face-to-face event, right? Where you're speaking on an international stage. Feel the satisfaction of making those decisions. Feel the satisfaction of brainstorming those ideas, driving your business forward, standing on that stage and making a difference. Now, I want you to think about how you seamlessly integrate parenting into this dream life. Are you taking breaks to play with your kids? Maybe your kids are a little older, you're taking breaks just to hang out with them. Maybe you're helping them with their homework. Are you all traveling together? You're exploring new places, seeing new sites, all while you manage your business remotely? Yeah, okay. Days can be exciting. Now, let's get to the end of your day. As your day comes to a close, how do you relax? How do you unwind? Are you spending a little quality time with the family again? 
Maybe you're indulging in a hobby, something you do to relax. I got my drums behind me. I'll go over there and I'll bang on the drums. It's very relaxing for me. Or perhaps you're just reflecting on the day's achievements and planning for the next day. You see, through this visualization, I want you not just to see the pictures, but I want you to focus on how you feel. That pride of building something from scratch. That joy of spending quality time with your family. That thrill of waking up in that dream home next to that dream person. That thrill of overcoming all those challenges that are in front of you today. There'll be new ones in front of you tomorrow too. But I want you to feel all that. That pride, that joy, that excitement, that thrill. Now, hold on to those feelings. Those, my friends, they're your fuel. They're your motivation on top of the other things that you already have, hopefully written down somewhere. Now, let's bring you back. I want you to slowly start to bring yourself back into the present. Take a few more deep breaths. Open your eyes and jot down those feelings, those insights, and those ideas that came to you as you did this. Now, you did it, right? Oh, okay. All right. If you're driving, you're going to do it later, right? Okay. I feel you shaking your head yes right now. And do this every once in a while. You don't do it every day. But if you do this every couple of weeks, you'll find yourself getting new ideas, new thoughts, new feelings, and the ones you are having right now, they get deeper and they get more ingrained inside you and they help push you over those humps that are going to they're going to jump up in front of you. Remember, this isn't about a fantasy, this vision. It's not just a fantasy. It's a real glimpse into what's possible for you, into the life that you can create with a little determination, the life you can create with some passion, and the life you can create with the sprinkling, right? Dude, that little that little magic dust of entrepreneurial magic. Here's the thing I truly believe in. God, Allah, Buddha, whoever you believe in, your creator would not allow you to be able to even envision it if it wasn't possible. That would just be cruel and unusual punishment. So hold on to it, cherish it, and let it be your guide on your journey. Here's the last exercise. I'm pushing you guys hard this time. A little longer episode, but I really want you to get this. So we've talked about big ideas. We've envisioned our dreams. And now it's time, yeah, to get our hands dirty. Every monumental journey starts with a single step. And today, I want you to identify yours. This isn't about grand gestures. It's about tangible, achievable actions that are going to get your wheels moving, get them turning, even those rusty ones that have just sat stagnant for so long. It's about finding that one little task that you could do right away, today, maybe right after you're done listening to this episode. That one there that's going to get you that dopamine hit and make you want to do the next one. But before you leap, you need to know where you stand. Huh? You need to take a moment and assess your current skills, your current resources, and of course, your passions. What the hell are you good at? What do you love doing? What resources do you currently have at your disposal? Oh, I don't have any. Bullshit. You have some. They might not be very much. This could be anything from a savings fund to start your business, a network of potential clients, or even something as simple as your laptop or your phone and an internet connection. Yeah, you're listening to me right now, so I'm going to assume you, at minimum you got those. Okay? Now, based off this self-assessment, let's brainstorm some potential business ideas and don't filter yourself. Whenever you're doing a brainstorming session, either by yourself or with other folks, filtering is not allowed. Just, if it pops into your head, it goes down on paper or up on a whiteboard or wherever you're taking your notes. Let the ideas flow. Maybe it's starting a blog. Maybe it's offering consulting services. Maybe it's launching an online course. Maybe you want to start a laundromat. I don't know what it is. At the end of the day, the sky's the limit. Okay? Now go through your list of ideas and pick one idea from your brainstorm that resonates the most and spend the next week researching it. A very defined set of time, seven days. All right, don't get caught up in the paralysis of analysis. Who's your target audience? What's the competition like? Is there even demand for the product or service that you're considering? 
All right. This is going to give you a, pl a clearer picture of the feasibility of your idea. I would even say when it comes to the market research, make it three days. You can get a lot done in three days, especially with everything being accessible via your fingertips nowadays. Okay. Now, based on your research, set one actionable goal for the next week. That means you can achieve this goal within seven days. It should be simple. It could be as simple as setting up a social media profile for your business. Hmm? It could be reaching out to potential mentors. It could be drafting a business plan. Whatever it is for you, something you can get done in the next week. The key is that it, you make it specific, you make it measurable, and you give it a date. And you adhere to that date. And it's not a month out, a year out. No. I'm going to get this done in the next five to seven days. Okay? And then share your goal with someone you trust. I remember way back when, guys, we were back to the 80s, maybe the late 80s, early 90s, sitting in the audience listening to Zig Ziglar. And he said, you want to share your give up goals with everybody. I'm going to give up drinking. I'm going to give up sweets. I'm going to give up cigarettes. But your go up goals... I mean, this is a goal we're talking about here. You want to share sparingly. You only want to share it with someone you trust, okay? Because you don't want to share the fact that you're going to be the number one salesman in your business with someone you'd be competing with. And you're like, oh, no, you're not, okay? So I want you to share your goal with someone you trust, a good friend, a family member. Heck, come on over to the Dark Horse Tribe on Facebook, right? darkhorseschooling.com backslash tribe will take you straight there. Come on in and join us. Share it with us. You'll have a whole host of cheerleaders. The key is having someone to hold you accountable that can push you forward. It can push you through the rough stuff and at the same time cheer you on for even the smallest bit of accomplishment. Okay? And then at the end of the week, I want you to take time to reflect. Did you achieve your goal? Of course you did. You're the kind of person that gets on here and listens to this podcast. I know you're going to achieve your goal. What challenges do you face? This is where I think a lot of people miss. What challenges did you face? What challenges did you overcome? How did you overcome them? What did you learn? The reason I ask these questions is because you're going to use these insights to set your goal for the following week. The next step and then the next step. Okay. So you want to take that time to reflect on the things you accomplished, what you faced in accomplishing them, what you learned in accomplishing them, and then set the next goal and keep moving forward. Because you've got to remember, entrepreneurship, my friend, is a sprint. It's not a marathon, okay? With every step, no matter how small, it's going to bring you one step closer to the finish line. So embrace the journey. Celebrate the milestones. And always keep your entrepreneurial fire burning bright. Yeah? Okay. Let's start wrapping things up here. Now, as we wrap things up here, let's zoom out for a moment. And let's look beyond the hustle. Let's look beyond the challenges. And let's look beyond even the successes. Why, why do I want to do that, Tracy? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because, my friends, at the heart of it all, this journey isn't just about you. And it's not just about me. It's not just about us. It's about the legacy you're building, the example you're setting, and the world that you're literally beginning to shape for your children, for your grandchildren. You feel me? Okay. And, that, and that's the mission we have here at the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast, if I haven't been clear. This isn't about financial freedom, though that is a byproduct. It's about forging a legacy of resilience, a legacy of creativity, and a fostering of the entrepreneurial spirit. It's about showing our children that dreams are worth chasing, that challenges are worth facing, and that with passion and perseverance and a little imagination and creativity, any damn thing is possible. How many kids you see out there, young and young toddlers all the way up to, I don't know, the kids just getting out of college, they're afraid of facing challenges. And I see so many of them just holding back their dreams. And many of them have just lost them altogether. They've been beaten out of them by one organization or another. But, you know, they're being molded when I think it's the parents' job. You. That's you, my friend. Okay? My job 
for my kids, your job for years. But uh, I digress. That might, might be a topic for a whole other episode, okay? Let me tell you a story here. There was once a mother. L let's call her Lisa. Lisa was stuck in this nine to five job. That's the very example we were talking at the beginning of this episode. She was always racing against the clock, right? She was always feeling like she was missing out on all her kids' milestones. You know all those amazing things I'm talking about, right? The first time they did a play and the first time they're in a sporting event. And one day, Lisa decided, screw this, enough is enough. She took the leap of faith, remember? She took a look at where she was standing and then jumped. And she started her own online coaching business. Now, I'm not gonna give you all kind of roses and blow smoke up your bottom. No, her journey wasn't easy. There were hurdles, there were setbacks, and there were quite a few sleepless nights. But through it all, here's the thing, she persevered and her children watched. They saw her mother's determination. They saw her mother's grit. They saw her grind. They saw her unwavering belief in herself, in her ability to reach her dreams. And you know what? They learned. Yeah, the thing about our kids, they're sitting there watching us, especially when they're younger. And they learn from us. They learn that calculated risks are worth taking. They learn that failures are stepping stones. They learn, well, maybe my kids learned the way I taught it. It's not failure, it's feedback. They learn that with hard work, dreams can and do come true. Today, my friends, Lisa's business is thriving. But more importantly than that, her children have grown up with this entrepreneurial mindset and they are ready to face the world with confidence and with that same ambition their mother showed them in starting her journey. So as you embark on your entrepreneurial journey, I want you to remember one thing. You're not just building a business. You're building a legacy. You're building a legacy that will inspire, that will empower, and that will shape the next generation, be it yours mine, your kids' gen next generation, my kids' next generation, whoever it is. And I almost think at this point, it's your damn moral imperative to do so. Otherwise, you're robbing from me and my kids and their kids and your kids and your kids' kids. All right? Okay. Now, okay. Whew. Let me wind it back in. So as we gallop towards the finish line here of today's episode, take a moment to reflect. Today, we've journeyed through the highs and lows of entrepreneurship. We've challenged a few beliefs, and we've even envisioned a brighter, bolder future, right? But, oh, okay, Tracy, that's all well and good. What's the crux of it all? Well, first, being a parent and entrepreneur, yeah, I get it. It's not a walk in a park. No, no. It's more like a thrilling roller coaster ride. Yeah, filled with twists and turns and the occasional loop de loop. <laughs> You're right. And it could, uh, sometimes those abrupt stops. But with every challenge, yep, comes an opportunity to grow, comes an opportunity to learn, and comes the amazing opportunity to set a shiny example for our little ones, even if they're not so little. Secondly, we learned that entrepreneurship isn't just about business, mm -mm, it's about legacy. It's about shaping the future, not just for ourselves, but for our kids and the generations that come behind them, even those that aren't even related to us. And to do that, you're going to need to challenge the status quo. You're going to need to question the norms. And you're going to need to dare to dream, dream big, damn it. That's all there is to it, right? Don't listen to the talking heads on social media and on the news stations telling you, you got to think this and this is what's going on. Stop. And take a moment and think for yourself, okay? All right. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, we've realized it's power to change our home, our neighborhood, our nation, and even our world, and our destiny lies within us. It's not about waiting for the right moment. It's about making this moment right. So whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned entrepreneur, I want you to remember every step you take, every risk you embrace, and every challenge you overcome brings you one step closer to your dream. So, my Dark Horse friends and family, as we wrap up, I urge you, no scratch that, I challenge you, don't just be a spectator in your own life. Don't just listen to the talking heads and the pundits in your ears and in your eyes. 
get in the damn saddle, take the reins, and don't spare the spurs, and challenge the status quo. Carve out and ride your own path because at the end of the day, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And whoa, what a glorious journey it is, right? Now, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Before you hit that pause button, fast forward button, or stop button on today's episode, I've got a challenge for you. Oh, no, no, no. It, it's not another thought exercise. It's an invitation. I invite you to dive a little deep. And I mentioned a little earlier to connect with like-minded souls and truly immerse yourself in this incredible journey that you're about to embark on, or maybe you're already on. If today's episode resonated with you even a little bit, if it sparked a fire within you even a little bit, or maybe if it just made you chuckle a little bit or made you go, hmm, then I invite you to join the Dark Horse Tribe Facebook group. It's a space filled with passionate parents, budding entrepreneurs, and dreamers just like you. Okay, we share resources, we support each other's ventures, and yes, occasionally share a meme or two. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. So if you're ready to take the next step, head on over to www.darkhorseschooling.com backslash tribe. That's the fastest way to get there. Now, if you're on Facebook already, you can just go up to that search bar up there and hit type dark horse tribe and you'll see us right there let's get the conversation going let's keep the conversation going one-on-one -on -one, shall we but wait there's more <laughs> if you believe in what we're trying to accomplish here and you want to challenge more parents to break the mold and think differently and think for themselves to do me a favor share this episode share the podcast spread the word ignite the flame Huh? Let's create a movement of parent entrepreneurs together. Let's get them all out there changing the world. Remember, my Dark Horse friends and family, we are unstoppable. So let's connect, let's collaborate, and let's make a few waves in the entrepreneurial world, shall we? And with that, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.